It's Derek. We're in the CBSDC green room with LP. Welcome. Hi. How are you, Derek? What's up? I'm doing good. My question to you is, how do you prepare your whistle? How do you how do you make sure that it's intact and it's it's ready for performance? I don't really uh, I don't really prepare. I should prepare. I just like I usually like chugging a bottle of water does it. You know, I just like it's kind of like the first indicator of like that my voice is going to be intact as well because you have to be like hydrated. It's kind of like if your lips are chapped, you're probably dehydrated most of the time. When did you learn to incorporate the whistle in music? When was that? When was the first track that you did where you're like, wow, the whistle's gonna work? Uh, I think it was Into the Wild was the first time um, on my last record that I put um, the whistle to to the test. I I was um, <coughs> excuse me, I was recording the song and I just laid down the ukulele and we were putting down some bass and I was sitting behind the producer and the engineer like playing along and whistling that like subconsciously. I didn't even know what I was whistling, and uh, they were like, what is that? that melody. I was like, I don't know. And they're like, just go put it in there. And that was a whistle. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to whistle this on stage. It was like kind of a daunting. I was like, am I going to be able to do that? And like, there's people with them laughing or something. <laughs> How did you perfect your whistle? I mean, did it, <laughs> did it take practice whistling while you work literally? It's like a skill, like anything else, I guess. Yeah. It just like kept going. And uh, I think I got better, like really, um, you know, uh, dare I say like penetration. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> It just, you know, the whistle has to like, it just like, it goes deep. Yeah. And it is. And I've heard you whistle and it does penetrate very deep. There you go. Uh, well, there you go, Derek. I like your, your whistle penetration. It's very satisfying <laughs> to me. We asked you this question earlier, but I wanted people to, to hear it. I asked you if you've ever been in a bar fight. Can you tell everybody about that ex experience and where it was? Um, it was on a, um, a, um, a train bar car. And it was just, I don't know, just a melee broke out, you know, like a guy, s uh, two of my friends were fighting. Uh, and um, and then I just remember somebody, like, some guy, like, fell on me, and I'm just, like, punching him, like, you know, like, some. <laughs> it was just, like, I don't know, it seems really silly at the time. I don't even remember. Like, there was no, like, there wasn't that much, like, anger in it, but everybody just started beating on each other. I don't know, you know, we were, like, teenagers, so it was, like, you know, we should have been in the car anyway. We were, like, fake ID in it, you know, whatever. It was a sordid story. Don't Don't let your kids on the train. That's it. And were you guys consuming uh, alcohol at that time? We were, we were. We were drinking beers. <laughs> drinking beers, underage, on a train. Drinking beers, on the train, beating people up. I can't envision the saloon fight from, like, the Wild West when you tell me that story. I, I, you know, I mean, bar fights are fun to watch on TV. I mean, you know, they're not nice or anything like that. I wouldn't recommend them. But, but yeah, this was, this seemed like that kind of thing. It was just like, you know, good fun. <laughs> You know, when you were performing Lost on You earlier, I was really thinking about uh, the b meaning behind the lyrics. And I felt like I've been, uh, to me, this is how I interpret it, right? So everybody is subjective, everybody interprets music differently. But I was like, I remember being in relationships where, like, I feel like I invested. It was almost like a, like a transaction. I invested all this time. And then, like, when they let it, when they just let me go so coldly, I was like, but I did all of this for you. How could you do that to me? And that's kind of how I felt. But I mean, it, I hate to sound cliche, but what was your inspiration or the genesis behind that song? Uh, this one was a little more complicated. Like it had, uh, you know, we ha didn't even really split up officially for another year after I wrote the song. Like we, that was the thing. It was kind of like insidious the way it went down because it was like happening in front of me in my, like, like as, as we were like together, like I was started... You know, you know when you start feeling that like kind of lonely feeling when you're in a relationship. Like that's the worst, I think, when you're in a relationship and you're just like, why do I feel lonely? That seems odd. You know, especially I mean, if you're home together. So I felt like that, and I just, I just felt like uh, this person was not. It wasn't registering what um, I uh, was bringing to the table, and I think you know, I think it was a two-way street. It's you know, the thing is, when I started this uh, record, my inspiration was. Um, like Paul Simon and some of those songs he wrote, like Still Crazy and like Slip Sliding Away and these, r you know, these like super adult, like kind of like dilemmas that happen in relationships where, you know, it's not all clear cut and nobody's necessarily right, but it's deeply hurtful and, and very, um, you know, it cuts very deep and, and, and makes you question everything about yourself and, you know, one of those good times. 
really a good time? It wasn't the bar fight days, you know. Like the bar fight good time. Days of, uh, you know, whatever and roses. <laughs> LP, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And your single lost on you on 94.7 Fresh FM. We're in the green room, CBS DC.